Good morning, everybody. It is day 30 of the suffering. And I am tired this morning. Whew, I feel exhausted. But it's all right. I'm up doing what I need to do, getting it in. All right, let me get this cardio done. I'll see you guys in the kitchen. Some days are going to be harder than others waking up in the morning to do what you're supposed to do. Doesn't mean it's going to be impossible to get up and do what you're supposed to do. I know sleeping in another 45 minutes sounds appealing and sounds way more enjoyable than waking up to go out there and do cardio first thing in the morning. But getting up and getting it done and getting it out the way is also kind of like, all right, well... See, if I would have slept in another 30, 40 minutes, then I would have lost this opportunity to do some type of aerobic work for my heart, my health, and my blood pressure, and just overall general wellness of weight loss and everything like that. So trying to keep the mindset of waking up and being extremely tired and going like it's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to not be fun. It's supposed to be exhausting. It's supposed to be measurable. You're supposed to be suffering. Waking up this early in the morning does not feel good. Waking up this early in the morning is not enjoyable. Nobody likes being forced to wake up to an alarm clock. And you like it even less having to wake up and have to do some type of physical activity straight out of bed. But remembering the mindset of like this is a choice. It's not, it's not something that you have to do. It's not something you're forced to do. It's not something that like is out of your control and out of your will like if you're doing this like i am this is something that you're choosing to do so the mindset has to be look i get to wake up i get to do this cardio i get to get out of bed and take care of myself so the mindset has to be a positive outlook especially when you're that negative in the mornings about wanting to wake up i don't mean negative like you're a negative person like Oh man, screw this and screw you. Not, nothing like that. But what I mean is when you wake up, you're tired, you're groggy, and your mind is going to fight you. Like, oh no, I'm still tired. Your body's going to be comfortable in a relaxed state saying, look, I'm not ready to reboot. I'm not ready to start up. I'm not ready to get going. Like you can still get a couple more hours of rest, which will allow us to feel better for the rest of the day or more energetic, whatever, whatever. So that's what I mean when I say negative. And here's the thing too. If you're getting six hours of sleep a night and you're waking up and doing an hour of cardio in the morning and you feel awful, yeah, I would I would skip the cardio and I would get the extra hour of sleep. I get about seven and a half to eight and a half hours of sleep every single night. So my sleep isn't like, oh, I'm going to bed and I'm waking up with only five hours, five and a half hours, six hours of sleep. I'm doing cardio for 20 minutes to an hour and then I go to work all day. Then I come home and work out and do another 20 minutes of cardio. Then I stay up late watching TV or playing games or hanging out or whatever. And then I go to bed whenever I'm finally exhausted. That's not what I mean. Um, if What I mean is if you are getting adequate amount of sleep. So if I wasn't getting at least seven and a half hours of sleep at night, uh, I would not be waking up to do cardio in the morning because getting less than seven and a half, eight and a half hours of sleep at night, it's really counterproductive for results and recovery. So first and foremost, you have to make sure that you're going to be able to recover from the training, from the cardio, from the stimulus. You have to be making sure you have the right nutrition. You're getting the right amount of nutrition. Not only you're getting the right nutrition, but you're getting the right amount of the right nutrition of what you need for your body's uh, recovery. So uh, keep all that in mind too. It's it's a bal balancing act. It's it's a scale, you know. And for the last thirty days, I have been balancing that scale. I have been making sure I've been monitoring everything that goes in my body, weighing it all out, even down to my fluid, getting a gallon and a half of water a day every day. Uh, some sometimes on the weekend I don't always don't always hit that quota. Uh, I might get like a gallon or a little under a gallon of water on the weekends, but stay, staying inside the air condition and not sweating so much and not doing cardio in the morning and the evenings and sleeping in, 
uh, that is what re reduces my water intake, especially the uh, sleeping in part because it's like getting up at five in the morning, getting a bottle of water in, eating and getting a bottle of water in, and then so on and so on, starting off the day. It, it's uh, reduced just from that alone. And I'm not going to try to overcompensate and start drinking, doubling up my water intake at certain points of the day because that's just going to make me pee a lot and it's going to make me feel a little bit of a uh, weight in my stomach that I don't want to feel sloshing around and just make me feel uncomfortable. And my body will absorb it and stuff like that. I don't want me uncomfortable like, oh, I'm bloating and I'm hurting, but like just drinking too much water. I think everybody knows that feeling when you drink way too much water, way too fast or too frequently and then you're constantly going to the bathroom trying to pee so I space out my hydration and especially because I'm not eating any sodium or salt I don't want to sit there and be like overly drinking fluids because it's just going to flush out my sodium my electrolytes even further so I try to be mindful of how much I drink and when I drink normally I don't drink fluid whenever I eat food uh, I normally only drink it between meals but with this diet I have to drink it while I eat because I cannot swallow that dry chicken on its own so I am drinking water I drink a bottle of water with every meal which is six bottles a day uh, eight bottles is a gallon and then I drink a bottle between every meal which is uh, roughly five additional bottles and then I'll have my protein shake which is about 20 ounces of fluid and I'll also have my coffee which is another roughly 12 16 ounces of fluid and I know I don't really count the coffee as hydrating or the protein shake but it's still fluid so give or take however much water that is um, added into it and stuff like that so because if I'm getting, if eight bottles is a gallon, I'm basically getting 11 bottles a day. If you include the coffee and the protein shake, you're, you're looking at uh, 13 bottles roughly a day. So like I said, it's, it's somewhere around a gallon and a half of, of fluid per day is what I'm getting. Oh, and then I also have a bottle of water while I work out. So that's, that's another, another bottle of water that I have during the day it's my workout water so I, I try to get plenty of fluid I try to get plenty of sleep plenty of rest i'm monitoring everything i do at this point and you don't have to do it like this this isn't something that like is necessarily necessary to do you can get great results by instinctual eating and drinking and eat, drink when you're thirsty eat when you're hungry eat until you're satisfied but that's not my goal just to like look a little better or, or feel a little better or whatever. Right now my goal is to really push the boundaries of what I'm capable of doing mentally. And also people, they, they tell me, oh, you can have salt and you can have seasoning. And yeah, I, I could if I wanted to, right? I, I could eat pizza if I wanted to and I could, I could eat hamburgers and I could eat sausage and tacos and I could eat all that stuff too. Like I, I know I could eat all that stuff. That's, that's not the issue. Uh... I'm doing this also for my blood pressure. I've said many times I'm doing this to challenge myself, but also one day I would like to compete in bodybuilding and doing a very hard restricted bodybuilding diet is a very, very difficult mental game to do. And is very restrictive and is very, very hard to do. So if I could do this on my own for three months with nothing more than a goal of the end date, for three months be this restrictive on my calories my diet my cardio my training and everything else it's letting me know mentally i'm capable of going through a bodybuilding prep is a bodybuilding prep harder than what i'm doing right now yeah it probably is uh it's probably a lot more grueling and tiring and more intricate and everything else but this is the starting beginning steps of being able to prepare myself to go through that mentally but okay i'm going to turn this off so i can eat and i'll see you guys at nine nine o'clock time for that good old chicken and rice and i feel a lot better than i did yesterday i gotta tell you how i was a little, a little upset yesterday about my results and my progress but today new day feel better i'm trying to be so i guess 
uh, dramatic on how I feel about things because I can get in my own head and I am my own worst enemy, but I'm only human. We all have our flaws, we all have our issues, but I know what mine is, and I know my issue. I overthink, I overanalyze, I overprocess, and then I try to figure out what it is that I'm not doing correctly and what I can do to make it better and more efficient. But to be honest, what I'm doing is about as much as I can do, and all I need is time. Just keep applying my knowledge and keep like consistent on what I'm doing, show up every day, and just day in and day out, be very consistent, and the results will come over time. You know, you didn't get fat overnight. You don't get lean overnight. It takes time. It's just a long process of day in and day out. But everybody knows, man, when you get those lows, they are hard. And I think that's what breaks most people. When they start getting that low, they start getting that, like, oh, man, where are the results? How come I'm not seeing it? But, like, I know I'm getting results. I see it on the scale. So it's like, man, that should be good enough. You're like, your scale is moving every week dramatically for you. But it's not about a number thing for me. It's about a body image. I'm trying to get a certain look, and that's my biggest thing is not looking the way I want to look. But it's coming. It's coming. Every single day I show up, I get that much closer. It is 12 o'clock. Just got done eating. I'm doing my 10-minute walk. So I figured i go ahead and record this. Okay, so get this. I, I mentioned this a, a while back about diminishing returns for cardio. There's studies and people out there that said that there's a point of diminishing returns for cardio. And what they mean by diminishing returns is if you do so much cardio, it makes you so tired and fatigued, you move around less during the day. So if you your normal day-to-day -day activities and functions are slowing down and you're less productive during the day, you're less productive at work, or you find yourself wanting to sit down more and rest and lay around more, then that's a diminishing return and cardio is probably actually hurting you more than it's helping you because of instead of being productive you're being unproductive during the day and just simply moving around 7,000 to 10,000 steps would be adequate to doing any kind of form of cardio well I have a physical job where I'm up and moving around all day and I do cardio but it doesn't affect my day-to-day -day productivity or what I'm doing throughout the day it's a it's the same no matter what in fact I even downloaded a step counter because I was curious how much do I move around during the day in between all of this because when I'm on my Stairmaster, it tells me how many steps I do. Then when I go on my 10 minute walks, I count my head to 1500 steps. Once I hit 1500 steps, I'm typically done with my walk. So I'm like, well, let me get the step counter so that way it can kind of monitor my movement throughout the day all day long. But the problem is, is when I'm working in a small area about 10 to 12 feet and I'm sidestepping and bending over and sidestepping and twisting and turning and moving within three to four feet, you know, in an area, sidestepping around, the phone doesn't detect it and I was like oh well when the phone bounces and moves around it detects movement and that's how you it, de it determines your steps that's not true mainly when you're on a longer walk and the GPS is picking you up is whenever it actually starts becoming accurate I know this because I've watched it and I've used it and I monitored it but anyways this is just to give me a generalization of how far and how much movement I'm doing just to kind of see if I'm roughing the same ballpark of movement day to day which which I am now, as far as it goes for diminishing returns on the cardio, like I was talking about, what about someone like my wife who has a job where she's in the computer all day answering phones and, and emails? She's constantly sending emails, answering emails, and she's on the phone all day nonstop. She gets two small breaks of 10, 15 minutes, and she gets a one, one hour lunch, I think. So for the whole entire day, she doesn't get to move around. She's literally sitting still in a chair, answering emails, answering phones. So. If she did an hour or two hours of cardio, even three hours of cardio a day, there's literally zero diminishing returns on 100% gains for someone like her because she has a sanitary lifestyle because of her job. Now, for someone like me or someone who has a physically demanding job or someone who doesn't even work and they're just active, becomes less active or less productive, then yes, I can see why there'd be diminishing returns. But for someone like my wife or someone who has an office job and their job requires them to sit still all day and they monitor or answer or whatever that's a hundred percent gain right there so there's variance and like everything there's outliers and there's variances and there's exception to the rule and everything else so just keep that in mind if you're doing a lot of cardio then you notice that you're less productive or if you have a job that you're not really required to move around like does this apply to me no it doesn't so but anyways it's 
some thoughts rolling around my head. I just kind of want to get out there and talk about it a little bit. But anyways, I'm going to finish up my walk and uh, I'll see you guys at four o'clock in the gym. Four o'clock back in the gym for another great workout. Tonight is arms and shoulders. So we're going to start with triceps, move to biceps, and then we're going to do shoulders. Uh, today I, I got all my fluid in, got plenty of water. I'm feeling hydrated. I'm feeling good. My back is definitely stiff from yesterday's workout. My chest is definitely stiff from yesterday's workout, but a good stiff, a good sore. Everything feels great. So I'm going to get in here and I'm going to get this knocked out and I'm going to go hard on this workout, get the cardio in. And then like always, I'll talk to you guys about the workout whenever I'm done with the workout. Uh, but just so y'all know, we are doing six sets for all three movements. Well, except for shoulders, for the biceps and triceps, I'm going to do two warm-ups on the first movement, one top set, one warm-up, one set, no warm-up, straight into the set. That's what I'm doing for biceps and triceps. And then for shoulders, I'm probably going to do like maybe two warm-ups and then a top set for each movement because each movement is slightly different than the other and working the front delts, the side delts, the rear delts. I don't really feel like training the front delts is going to really warm up the rear delts and vice versa. So... I'm probably going to do like one to two warm-ups on each movement of that. I'll play it by ear and see how I feel. But that's what we're doing for sets and reps tonight. And then I, that's basically it. All right, well, let me get this workout started, and I'll talk to you guys whenever I'm done.
that was a really good workout i had a really great pump tonight everything felt good everything was clicking the only thing that i think might have been an issue was the overhead ropes because i had to go so heavy tonight on them and i did one warm-up and then jumped right into it i think i might have to do two warm-ups on that one but what i'm going to do is i'm going to do exactly what i did on my shoulders so i told you guys the shoulders and everything i'm going to play by ear if i have to do more sets i will so what I did for my shoulders was I did two warm-ups on the shoulder press and then I did two warm-ups on the side laterals and two warm-ups on the reverse uh, flies, cable flies as well for the rear delts. But how I did it, instead of doing two sets of 12 for the warm-ups and then a full set of 12, I did a set of six and then a set of 10 and then I did my actual set of 12, which would be my top set after my two warm-ups. So a warm-up of six reps, a warm-up of 10 reps to keep the reps lower and then a full on actual set and that I just did so that way I can feel the joint moving I could feel the muscle warming up I could feel if there's anything in the area that was kind of like bothering me or clicking or not working correctly and that way if I, I had to make adjustments to the weight or the load I, I would so next week when I come in to do the overhead ropes I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna probably do a set of five to six or a warm-up of five to six and then a warm-up of eight to ten and then I'm gonna go into my actual set of twelve and that way I don't overdo like my like overdo it with the weights and my joints not being ready for that movement so like i said the goal is six sets total but if i have to make an adjustment to add an extra set in or extra warm-up should i say to make sure the joint is ready and it's going to be safe and it's a movement that my joint can handle i'm going to do that because i'm not trying to get hurt i'm not trying to lift with my ego and i'm not i don't have anything to prove in the gym uh the results are what i'm after not any type of like hoorah metal for getting hurt or overdoing it in the gym uh the pump like i said was really good shoulders biceps triceps everything went well i can't complain about it i did 20 minutes on the stairmaster on level four uh that was fairly easy tonight it wasn't hard I, I was breathing at a little accelerated pace than what a normal talking pace would be which is where i want to be i don't want to be gasping for air but i also don't want to be able to sit there and have a full-blown conversation and just be able to act like i'm not even doing anything uh, that's how my pace is when I walk. I walk at a nice comfortable pace, but when I'm doing the Stairmaster, I want my heart to be elevated a little bit to help my heart, my cardiovascular, and everything else that goes along with it. Uh, what else can I say about it? Uh, I think that's going to be it for the, the workout. I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, I, I will add this in, you know, on the warm-up sets, I don't do that pause and that slow contraction. I just move the weight through. Can six can can consecutively without stopping without pausing at the bottom or the top. I just move it all the way through to fill the joint, fill the muscle, make sure everything's working correctly, and then on the last set because I don't want to fatigue the muscle. I'm not trying to overload it with a lighter weight. I'm trying to preserve as much energy as I can for that top set. Then when I hit that top set, that's that's where I go ham as hard as I can. Now I try to keep one to three reps shy of failure, and the, you can look at failure in a couple different ways, right? There's failure like I, I can't lift it anymore. And then there's failure like I can't like hold it. And then there's failure like I can't even control it going down no more. So there's three different stages of failure. It just depends on what you're considering failure and what part like Dorian Yates considers true failure where you can't even hold the weight no more. Like, like literally someone has to pick it up for you and you can't even control it on the way down. That's pure failure. I'm not trying to get to that. I'm to me in this training block, my consideration of failure is where I can't hold it and control it. Like if I can't hold the contraction, and if I can hold the contraction, but I can't control the negative, if I hit one of the two, that puts me without one to two reps shy of failure. That's where I call it because I might be able to hold it, but I can't lower it in a controlled manner or I can't hold it, but I can still lower it in a controlled manner. When I get to that point, that's about when I'm like, okay, that's pretty much it. I maybe got one more in me. I might push for that extra last one. And then after that, I'm done completely because I'm not trying to go so far past. I can't recover from it and my muscles are just torn down and beat up because i do train my upper body twice a week so my chest and back gets trained twice my arms and shoulders get trained twice my legs get trained once but they're separate days you guys know if y'all watch the video all right so that's that's for sure it for the training 
Uh, diet is the same as always. Nothing different, nothing new, nothing exciting. Diet doesn't change. It's always the same. It's always just egg whites and oatmeal, chicken and rice, and protein shake. Uh, I feel good today. This morning I was tired getting out of bed. I was a little groggy, a little tired, hard waking up this morning, but overall I feel really good. Mentally, I, I feel good mentally. I don't feel so emotional today about my results and progress. Yesterday was an emotional wreck. I had a lot of issues emotionally, and I was just going everything in my head and analyzing, overthinking, and contemplating, and debating, and just questioning all of it. But that's what I do. I'm an overthinker. I overanalyze. I over, you know, everything. Like It's almost like there's too much knowledge and too much information out there where it becomes like information overload. Where it's just like everybody's saying something different, but they're all saying the same thing. And this guy says this, this guy says that, this trainer says this, this trainer says that, this Olympia says that, that Olympia says this, this says that. But my experience tells me this, my experience tells me that, my experience with this, my experience with that. So it's 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 kind of hard and you could get overwhelmed real quickly. But the one thing I know for sure is when you do this long enough, you need to develop your principles. And then your principles are like laws. Like I know this amount of sets works for whatever muscle group. This amount of rep range works. This tempo works. This style of drop sets, rest, pause, superset, straight sets, negative. This works for me for this. This works for me for that. This is that. And then you'll learn your body over time. You write down your numbers, write down your set, write down your weight loss, your dieting. You write down all your programming and you look at you, you take pictures and you have pictures to go along with your programming and your diet and your training. Then you can look back and be like, okay, when I did this, this was the result. When I did this, this was the result. When I did this, this was the outcome. You start learning what works for you, regardless of who says what, because we're all the same, but we're all completely different. So what works for one may not work for someone else. And what worked for you in the past may not work for you in the future. You might do a routine and love it and it works great. Then all of a sudden, a year later, six months later, year and a half later, it stops working. And then you have to figure out why isn't it working no more? Am I not putting the intensity? Am I not putting the volume? Am I not eating? Am I not sleeping? Am I not drinking? Or is the stimulus just not, not there no more for me? So keep that in mind when it comes to training. There's so many different ways. But like I said, I'm not emotional about it today. Tomorrow's a new day. It might be different. I don't know. It's a roller coaster for me for this. But um, I'm actually going to drink this shake now, and I'm going to get ready to go to the tanning salon because I think my wife is finishing up with her training session so we could go get a uh, tanning session. And then I also got to mow the yard, a lot of other stuff I got to take care of today. So thank you guys for watching. End of the video here. We'll see you all tomorrow.